Hi everyone, this is Dr. Orkut Bajek and today we are going to look at some of the performance measures to compare the, the forecasts made by different techniques. So in the previous videos we looked at how to use simple moving averages technique and weighted moving averages technique to forecast future values. And I have an example of these forecasts for a data set which I summarize on the left hand side of the screen. So we have a company and for this company we looked at the last 12 time periods let's say 12 months and we looked at the actual sales amounts okay so for example in january we sold 30 items in february we sold 28 items and so on so i have the actual values for the first 12 time periods and i'm trying to forecast the sales for the next time period which is period 13 okay so i used the simple moving averages technique and i forecasted the sales for um time periods starting from period 4 up to 13 and same for the weighted moving averages i have forecast starting from period 4 up to period 13 okay so note that an important point is i don't know the actual sales in period 13 okay I only have the forecasts and these two methods gave us different forecasts and again the first one is the simple moving averages and the second one is the weighted moving averages technique okay and if you're interested in looking at how we use those techniques I will put the description I, I put the link of those videos in the description of this video okay so our focus in this video will be to see which one of these forecasting methods performed better okay so when I have the forecast how can I measure which one is performing better all right so I'll use three different performance measures which are MAD mean absolute deviation and MSE which is the mean squared errors and the cumulative error which is essentially the sum of the errors okay and when I, when I say error, what I mean essentially is that error is the difference between the actual value and the forecasted value, okay? For example, in period four, the actual sales is 27 units, but with the simple moving averages technique, my forecast for that time period is 30.3. So there is an error, right? And again, I don't expect my forecasts to be 100% accurate, right? So there will be some sort of an error. And the error here is the difference between these two values, okay? So what I'm going to do first is to calculate the error value for each time period in which I have a forecast, okay? So the error for period 4 will be the difference between the actual and the forecasted sales using the simple moving averages technique and the same will follow for period five actual minus the forecast okay so first i'm calculating the error values for the simple moving averages technique and then i will do the same for the weighted moving averages technique so if you noticed what i did is if you if you look at the the formulas what i did is essentially the same thing I looked at the difference between these two values and I jumped into the next row and I performed a similar calculation and what I'm going to do next is again very similar I'm going to look at the difference between the actual and the forecast so for those situations what we do is to use the repeating formula and drag that cell all the way down to calculate all the errors and the reason why I didn't go into period 13 is I don't know the actual sales for period 13 okay so I can't really calculate the error for this time period okay so these are the errors so the next step is going to be to to calculate the absolute deviations Another name for absolute deviation could be could be absolute error. So what this method is going to do is essentially to take the absolute value of the error. Okay, so we calculated the errors already. All we need now is to take the absolute value of these errors. So the absolute value can be calculated by using the function on Excel ABS and 
all you need is the number that you want to take the absolute value of. Okay, so the first one is here. I'll repeat the same thing for all the other um, error values. So what I do again is to drag this function all the way down to get all the absolute deviations. Okay, and next we are going to calculate the squared errors. Squared error is very simple to calculate. All you need is to take the square of the errors that you calculated, okay? So there's a function for it. There are multiple ways to do it, but I would like to use the Excel function. So there's a power function and it requires two inputs. The first one is the number and the second one is the power, okay? The number is the error for the, um, the first period that I calculated an error for. And the power is going to be two because we are taking the square of the um, the the number that we just inputted, okay? And that really will be eleven point eleven. Another way to do this could be the essentially let's let's show it for the next time period. Essentially to multiply the error by itself, okay? So that could also be another way. So again, you can multiply the error by itself to take the square of that. Um, value. Um, since we will repeat the same thing over and over again, what I will do is to drag this function all the way down and calculate the squared errors. Okay? So I'll do the same thing for the weighted moving averages uh, technique. Again, error is the difference between the actual and the forecasts. This time I did B6 minus D6 because now we are looking at the weighted moving averages so this difference will give me the error when we use the weighted moving averages technique here. And the next one will be uh, the actual minus the forecast. And similarly, since this will repeat, I can just drag the first function all the way down and get all the um, error values. And the absolute deviation, we will use the absolute value function select the number close parentheses and you have the absolute deviations drag this function all the way down you have all the absolute values okay so if you look at these values all the negative ones became positive which is what we would expect and the last one will be to take the square of the errors again we are looking at the squared errors the number and comma two because we are taking the square so this function will give us give us the squared error. Drag this all the way down. Okay. So question A is asking MAD, which is the mean absolute deviation. Question B is mean squared error or MSE. And question C is the cumulative error. So I'm looking at the error column. So I am going to go ahead and calculate the cumulative error first. So this will give me the cumulative error which is the sum of the error terms okay so i use the sum function and then calculated the uh, cumulative error for the simple moving averages technique next let's calculate the mean absolute deviation because we are at the absolute deviation column so mean absolute deviation means that we are going to take the average of the absolute deviations so we can use the average function and take the average of all the absolute deviations and then that will give you the mean absolute deviation of 7.37. The mean squared error um, is going to be the average of all the squared errors. So we are going to use the average function and take the average of all these squared errors. Okay. So that will give us the mean squared errors. So let's repeat this for the weighted moving averages. Again, cumulative error will be the sum of all the error terms. Okay, so select all the errors, use the sum function, and you have the cumulative error. The mean absolute deviation is going to take the average of all the absolute deviations you just calculated and that will be 8.07 and the last one the mean squared error is equal to the average of all of your uh, squared errors here all right so that will give you the mean squared error which is 84.88 
So question A, compare the accuracy of the forecast using MAD. Please indicate which forecast appears to be the most accurate. So using MAD, the, the simple moving averages has 7.37 and the weighted moving averages has 8.07. So since the error, the, since the mean absolute deviation is higher for the weighted moving averages, we are going to conclude that the simple moving averages technique performed better because the mean absolute deviation is smaller, right? We don't want error to be high. That, that tells us if the error is high, that tells us that we forecasted the values incorrectly more, okay? So in this case, the simple moving averages technique is better using MAD for this data set Using MSE, we are going to look at the mean squared errors, 74.5 versus 84.8. Again, since the mean squared error is smaller for the simple moving averages technique, we are going to conclude that the simple moving averages technique performed better for this data set. And the last one is the cumulative error. The cumulative error is negative 0.3 versus negative 1.3. So this tells us that the magnitude of this um, negative 1.3 is larger. So it's a little uh, more inaccurate compared to the simple moving averages. Therefore, we will again conclude that the simple moving averages technique performed better for this data set. Again, this may not hold for every single data set that is you might have a data set in which the weighted moving averages technique performed better. All right. So this is not always true. It depends on the data set. It depends on the uh, weights that you assign. It depends on how many time periods you include in your moving averages. Okay. So this will conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.